Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have an amazing guest on our show today. It's Christopher Stilson. He is an amazing, amazing medium, psychic, and he works off of the energies of people. He does energy therapy and lots of other things, and he has helped thousands of people with his true natural talent, his gift that he was given. So before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to Happy um, Happy Wellness Expo. They are sponsoring this, this episode and they are doing an expo in Livingston, New Jersey. They'll have over 100 exhibitors and anyone is welcome to come. All the information will be in the description box and you know, feel free to give him a call if you'd like to be one of the exhibitors or if you just want information on how to get there or so forth. All that information is there. So I look forward to seeing you there. I'll be there. And now we're going to go to Christopher because I'm very excited to have you on the show today. So tell everybody exactly about a little about yourself and what you do. So I'm a renowned psychic medium. I am a transformational leader, a international best-selling author, a diamond feng shui consultant, and an energy therapist. Also, as a spiritual teacher, I love teaching people. Um, one of my favorite things to do in life. And um, I usually like to do my psychic medium readings are my favorite thing. I love connecting with people. I love connecting with energy. I do it all the time out in public, you know. Um, I have helped hundreds and thousands of people all over the world. I've read people in Korea, um, Las Vegas, Texas, and numerous other places. Um, and I do readings by phone, video, and or in person, obviously. And it's just wonderful that I I do my best to try to help people because that's my that's my true purpose in life, you know, my my calling. I've always done it throughout my childhood. And as I got older and connected with my spirit guide, Anna, even further, she has led me on this path of um, discovery myself for other people. Oh, that's amazing. You know, I, I'm a very spiritual person myself. And one of the questions I was curious about is that a lot of people connect with their spiritual guide and they learn who their spiritual guide is. Is there a specific way of learning who your spiritual guide is? Like, how did you know the person was Anna? Did the name come to you or was there some type of spiritual message or symbolism or did it come in your dreams? How did you know? So uh, a little background about Anna first is that I met her through um, traumatic experiences in my life. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was in an abusive relationship and uh, while the man was screaming in her face, I began to cry. I was four years old and I went behind the love seat and this woman appeared out of nowhere and she looked at me and she goes, your life's about to change. Just listen to me. And she smiled and then vanished. Um, ever since then, I heard this voice in the back of my head that was just kind of guiding me in different directions yeah. and all of that stuff. And it took me a while to actually get used to her. I was actually um, having some issues through middle school. I actually diagnosed myself with schizophrenia because I didn't want to deal with any of it whatsoever. Right. Um, so then after a while, I was having another panic attack in um, the beginning of high school. And when I was having this panic attack, I out loud said, you know, I want this anxiety to go away. And wow. the voice came back and said, well, if you would just listen to me, I can help you. And she gave me these pointers on how to help myself with this anxiety. And my anxiety came from channeling. That was the problem. So she pretty much um, taught me how to channel. Um, so when I started channeling, the anxiety went away. So then I started getting to know her a little bit better. And what she does with me is I made it a rule. She's the only one that's allowed to talk to me because it sounds like a high pitch ring or a chirping noise. Right. Um, so she's the only one that's allowed to talk. So what happened is I started asking questions and I one day said, what is your name? I never caught your name. And she said, Anna. And so that's how I was getting information from her. And what I love is that everybody here in the physical world, we all have spirit guides. Yes. And our spirit guides are literally kind of like our best friends on the other side. Yeah. And what happens with that is that we don't, um, uh, we don't know our spirit guides in the physical world. We've never met them. Right. A lot of people all the time go, is my mom my spirit guide? My grandma my spirit guide? Well, who guided you to the day they died? Like, you know, you had to have someone there. 
So what happens is you choose your spirit guide before coming here. I and see. this person's supposed to help you throughout life. Um, and the best way to connect with them is literally to relax your mind and body because the more relaxed you are, the more information you'll get. Yes. And just start asking questions. Spirit guide, what is your name? Spirit guide, what do you look like? Spirit guide. And you'll start either seeing symbols, you'll start hearing things, maybe feeling things. Yeah. And then don't second guess that. Just go with it. Right. All right. That That is great information because, you know, I feel sometimes that I have multiple spirit guides. I feel like I have a cluster of people over me. And, you know, sometimes I wonder because a lot of people I know who are spiritual, who are very connected to the universe, they know who their spiritual guides are. And I always wonder because I always for myself, I always how do you know your their name? You know, how is it through dreams or is it through visualizations? Or just like you said, it could be just it comes to your head all of a sudden, you know. So that's that's great info. Now you you do this on a on a daily basis. You said you give lots of readings. Like, where did this passion come from? Like, did and did it come? Did you have this gift when you were younger? Or was this something that over time it really developed into something very strong and then you started to really evolve spiritually as time went on? So I've always had it. Uh, my mom raising me, she kind of went a little insane with me saying, who's this <laughs> woman? Or, you know, um, what is this about? Or what is that about? Or I uh, one time I knew that I was getting a laptop for Christmas, yeah. um, you know, when I was younger. But so um, I've always had it. I've always, it, it, you know, it's um, everyone's born with it, but then we yeah. start to block it out. Mine has always been open. And um, what I find very interesting with with people is that they tend to be afraid of their own gift because they've seen things before. So that's why they yeah. block it out or society makes them block it out. Yeah. Um, so I've always had it. I've always been open with it. I've always um, connected with it. Like I said, though, when I was in middle school, I didn't want anything to do with it. I diagnosed myself with his brand and going, this isn't real. Yeah. Um, and how it became more of me doing readings every day, all day long. And I do shows and events. I travel and things like that. Um, is because when I was younger, I wanted to be an actor so badly. And I just couldn't remember my lines. <laughs> you try having dead people talk to you and fill your head up with things. You can't remember anything, you know? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's extra, you know? So um, what happened was I was sitting on bed and I was very upset that I couldn't. And I said to Anna, I said, I really want to remember my lines. Is there any way that you can help me remember my lines? Yeah. And she goes, Chris, you're going to be on stage, but it's not as an actor. You're not supposed to be an actor. And I go, what do you mean by that? And I was like very disappointed. Yeah. Like I was upset. And um, sure enough, she was right. I am on stage, but right. it's for shows and lectures and teachings and yeah. readings. Um, so I absolutely love that. But what happened was I worked at um, a factory and I worked there for three years. I was very depressed working there. And um, Anna told me that I should start doing readings on the side for a little bit. Right. So I said, sure, why not? Let's just do a little bit of readings. Yeah. So I started doing readings after work, um, you know, two or three, maybe every other day or whatever. Right. And to be honest, I was doing mini readings at um, at my mom's house when I was younger. I started doing readings technically when I was 16, but didn't do them much. Right. Um, but then I started doing them, you know, the part time. And then after my three years of being, um, after my three years of being at this place, I woke up one day and Anna said, get ready. And I'm like, for what? I'm just getting ready for work. Yeah. She did not answer me. Didn't answer me. Um, so what happened is I went to work and they were doing a uh, plant meeting. And this plant meeting was on a Friday, which was very odd because they only did the first Wednesday of the month. And out of the three years, it was always the first Wednesday of the month. And I was like, this is weird. So I went in there and they were, you know, telling us about numbers and all of that stuff. Yeah. Well, then they said, we want to do a voluntary layoff. You can be laid off um, if you, you know, if you get chosen, if you volunteer and you get two months off, no pay and everything like that. But you would come back with the same position, same hours and yada, yada, yada. I signed up and surprisingly, I was chosen. I took the two months off. I just, I did the, I started doing my readings full time for the two months and I built my clientele, never went back. So wow. in two months, I built everything. And I've been doing readings now full-time for probably eight years. 
Oh, that's amazing. You know, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Like I always had the mentality that everything we go through in life, there is a purpose. There is a reason why we go through everything and it's to mold us. And whether it's in this life or the next life, or there, there are reasons why I feel like we go through everything in life. It, what's your intake in from your own spiritual guidance and your own spiritual knowledge? How do you feel? Because sometimes people say, why me? Why me? Why are these obstacles happening? And how do you feel about that? So um, sadly, what I talk about all the time for people is that we write our own lives out. People get so <laughs> angry about that. <laughs> so um, we actually chart things. It's the Akeshic Records. So we choose every single thing that's going to happen in our lives um, from our parents, our siblings, marriage, health, career, finance. We choose it all. Now, there are there is a thing called option lines. And that's usually something that we don't write in our chart. We just go, I'll deal with that when I get over there. Yeah. Um, so there are option lines. And then, of course, we have free will here, too. So it's not like we follow everything down to a T, um, okay. but we do have free will. And what happens with this is that when you think about it, when when you get when, you know, as you get older, when you become more spiritually aware and whatnot, you can sit there going, why is this happening to me? And then you realize when I was three, I remember I looked at this, blah, 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 and then it rippled into this and then it rippled into that. So when you do things in your chart, it's all part of a path. Right. And I find it very interesting because um, there's things that I, I sit here looking at and I'm like, oh, that's why that happened to me then because it had to be now when I realized this or learned this. Yeah. Um, or this is what I learned from because it's all part of life lessons. Right. We're literally here as a school. We come here, learn, and then we shut up and go home. That's just right. It. <laughs> That's how I always looked at it too. I, I I looked at the as Earth as a boot camp. Basically, it's it's lessons learned, and we become stronger, and we learn the lessons. It molds us into a better person, you know. Or it, it it gives us. It maybe maybe we we feel like certain things didn't do us well, but. In every negative thing that happens, there's always something positive you could pull out of it. So then you pull out all the positive things and you just created a, a, a positive characteristic of your whole self. And I feel like that it, you take that and you, it, you, when you cross over, it's... It's it's basically to get us ready for whatever's next, you know, whatever, you know, that the thing is, is that, you know, they, they say that for me, when I went to like I was telling you before the show, I went to a Reikiist and she was able to see, you know, um, different areas of where I was before. And she said that I was eight or eight year eight light years away that I I chose to come back to Earth. And I was joking around with you. I said, why the hell would I do that? You know, <laughs> and I was like. So it's like, you know, it seems like they get us ready for something else and, or, and that, or, or we choose to come back because there's a purpose for us to come back to this planet. And, you know, that's the kind of interpretation I got from her was that, you know, we, we, we learn things as, as our spirit evolves and goes to these different places. And then sometimes we choose to come back and we're here for a purpose. There is a, there is a, a, a meaning, a reason why we're here. Like how, what's your intake? Do you feel like whatever, it, if we go it light years away, wherever our energies go, wherever, if they're, you know, wherever they evolve, you know, is there a purpose? Do you believe that there is a purpose? There is a reason why we come back to earth and there is a reason why we go to other places. Yeah. So there's actually, um, a few purposes for us. So the first big major purpose is because we're trying to perfect ourselves and we're also trying to perfect ourselves for God. We're also learning for God because God's all knowing. So what happens is as we are, everything down to you getting dressed or how you're driving your car gets yeah. facts to him, which I absolutely love that. So that's like the main purpose is for learning and the learning experience and perfecting ourselves. Um, the other reason is because there's also many purposes. So in our lifetime, we may want to have a purpose of learning from um, hard love, or we want to learn from a hard career. So there's always those many things. And in many lifetimes, there'll be many different things you want to learn from or what you want to do. Um, when I, you know, when I was told by Anna that this is my 38th life in the physical world, I was very upset i was like are you kidding me right now like <laughs> am i am i am i i'm not perfect enough yeah and it's not the fact that we're not perfect enough it's actually because we want to keep perfecting and um we all get reincarnated about 50 uh 40 to 50 times believe it or really? not 40 to 50 times. yeah wow. and um 
there is some incidences where I see people with a little bit more, but they're very eager souls that want to continue. Yeah. Um, I call those extra credit souls. They want <laughs> to extra credit. Um, there's not a lot of those, but there is extra credit. But then, believe it or not, there's also the, there's souls that we call chickens because they've never incarnated. They rather learn on the other side. They right. they don't want to. And what I find very funny too is that they call Earth on the other side the asylum asylum of all planets to incarnate on because this is actually the hardest and worst planet to incarnate on yeah i believe it i believe it and i i I remember like my um when i went to the great kiss she said that my husband never left the planet earth that he has that he's been on earth this whole time so so Mm -hmm. however long he's been on earth that's that's he's been here and he hasn't he hasn't experienced the light years away and but then if a person passes aren't we supposed to I guess you get reincarnated, but you're reincarnated in a different life on the planet Earth and you don't, you know, what makes it what makes it different that some people stay on Earth and some people evolve, they cross over and they might go somewhere else in the universe. It all depends on what they want to learn um, oh, and how experienced their life, their their souls are. Okay. Um, and so obviously, like I said, this is like the same asylum of all planets to go on because yeah. it's always the hardest. So when we, from my understanding and what Anna has taught me is that our souls here, um, come here because it is harder. Um, and we are more of troopers to be here, to learn through those hard situations, okay. um, because we are more advanced and ready for those harder situations. Okay. Um, so it all depends on how your soul is and how advanced your soul is. Oh, I see. I see. Now, when it comes to like auras, like a lot of people, they, they we have different color auras and they represent different things. Can you explain about the energies and the auras? Because I, I was doing some reading. I haven't finished yet, but I know that we all have certain auras. We heard when you look at each individual, certain colors come out more vibrantly and they, they see more. One person might have maybe like a white aura. One might have an orange aura. Can you explain the different energies and auras and explain what they represent for people? Because I think people, you know they hear dips and dabs of things and they don't completely understand but i think you know we have a lot of skeptics and we have a lot of believers but i think if people are more understanding and they might under open themselves up to a whole new world that is amazing so aura is actually a scientific thing now too people actually can see them through um certain lenses and pictures um the aura and energy field so with an aura um, I never, I, I don't see auras with my eyes. I see them through the third eye where I can see, they just show, they, uh, spirit will show me images of colors. Okay. Um, there are people that are gifted that will see the whole aura around people. Now, an aura is actually the spiritual energy field. It's where your energy is yourself. And yeah. these auras can actually change depending on your mood okay. and, um, how you feel or what you're doing in life. So when we go into, so when I look, when I look at people and I see a certain color or I'm feeling, because a lot of people feel auras and that's where people can like, when they go into a grocery store and they walk past someone, they go, oh, I don't like that. It's because they're feeling the aura of someone. Um, And with these auras, when we're at a higher vibration, a higher vibrational aura, that's where life feels like it's falling into place. We we're guided differently. We're open to spirit. We're channeling differently. Yes. When you go into a lower vibration, which could be a lot of the like gray grays and things like that, that is where you're dealing with human stuff, which is the grief, right. depression, anxiety, um, and things like that. And your aura affects you physically as well. So oh. when you do have a higher vibrational aura, you feel healthier, vibrant, well. When you go into a lower vibration, this can cause um, immune system issues. This can cause issues with kidneys, thyroid, organs overall. Um, It can create cancer sometimes with a lower vibrational energy. And a lot of people too, I wanna jump to that real quick, is that people all the time say to me, well, I don't, why would I chart cancer? Well, when you chart, when you chart your health, you can choose cancer, yes, but you want to learn through that experience. But not all the time people choose the cancer in their chart. Our vibration can cause that. Okay. So when you, um, for example, when you're having a lot of fears and anxiety, you might develop issues with your kidneys. 
Okay. And that's because um, our organs store energy as well because of our auras. Yeah. And so when you're having issues with fear and anxiety, it affects the kidneys. It okay. uh, over over it overreacts with the kidneys. And that's why people have like kidney failure, kidney stones, things like that. And the gallbladder, I laugh at this all the time because I'll look at people and be like, wow, they store a lot of anger. And then I'll be like, do you still have your gallbladder? And they're like, no, it got removed. No, no, no wonder because the gallbladder stores anger. And Uh when you're internalizing your anger, the gallbladder will flare up. And that's why some people have to get it removed. Wow. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's it's funny because I, I feel like I I feel the auras. I don't. I've never seen the colors, and that that's why I started doing some reading on it because I really wanted to see the colors. But mm-hmm. I but when I go near people, I feel their auras. I feel. I can feel their. I feel their emotions. Like I know what they're feeling inside. I don't have to talk to them. I don't have to. I don't have to get to know their whole story. It's like I just can feel it. You know. But I've never seen the colors like you're you're talking about and I was always interested oh how how can you you know get to that level where you could actually start to see the colors can you get to that level or just some people are just kind of they're bought they're just they're made to just feel it or they just maybe they they could practice and they could open up because you you said we really have and we could really develop into any level every everybody has the ability it's how open we are and how we practice correct yeah, so you can develop connecting with things. Um, sometimes I do somewhat worry about people that see auras all the time because <laughs> that could also be a sign of stigmatism. Oh. Um, so they have to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that people that do see auras are all crazy, but what I'm saying is make sure you be aware that it could be a problem with your eyes. Um, but uh, the best way to do so is continue to open up further and right. um, know what Claire you work with most because there's five different Claire's. Okay. The Claire sentient, Claire condensate, clairvoyance, um, uh, Claire audience, and then I can't ever remember the fifth Claire, but it's smell and taste. So it's either you hear things, see things, know things, feel things, smell and taste things um, because that's this spiritual way of uh, connecting. Um, so the clairvoyance is clear sight. So mm-hmm. that's where the, that's if you, if you enhance that area, it's a big possibility you enhance the seeking of, or the seeing of auras. Gotcha. Um, with me being clear, because I'm, I am very clairvoyant. I get images in my head um, while I'm doing my readings a lot about things yeah. that I have to talk to people. Right. Um, I've never seen the aura still though, um, which I've always questioned. If I'm very clairvoyant, why can't I see an aura? Right. But I'm assuming it's because I am supposed to tap into it a different way than other yeah. people might too. Um, people don't, people, it's because people all the time, well, they, they say, well, I, I would love to be a psychic and whatnot. And I love, I love that when people want to be spiritual. I love when, when they want to connect and read people, go for it. I always tell people, try it out. It doesn't, you yeah. know, it's not a big problem. But if your chart doesn't say that you're supposed to be a psychic, you will end up as a psychic because okay. we're learning through all those experiences. You can still read people. Like I said, everyone's born gifted like that. But that's another reason why it kind of lowers sometimes in people because their chart says they're not supposed to use that. They're I... supposed to go on more of the scientific way or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's pretty interesting. you know. And you are also talking about that you... You are trying to create, you have right now where you have different services, like where you're doing something new. You said you, ha- it's like 33% of, explain deeper, because it sounded very interesting, but you, you kind of just briefed on it before the show. And I was just wanting you to get more deep into it. So you have like these different services. Tell me about them. So we were actually born um, in the physical world. Everyone was with uh, three types of lux. There, we, we call them lux. There's the heaven luck, human luck, and earth luck. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and each one of those lux is actually thirty three point three percent of your manifesting. So when you do, when you work on all three of them, you're actually tapping into ninety nine point nine percent of your manifesting. So you're creating your life overall. And the first luck that we work on is um, the earth luck. And that earth luck is uh, feng shui. So I'm a feng shui consultant. I help people with a feng shui. I was um, taught by Marie Diamond, um, who is a famous feng shui master. If you ever heard of the um, book, The Secret, Mm-hmm. Um, she was actually in the documentary. So oh, Marie really? Dime was actually, yeah. So she was in the documentary of it. And um, 
I actually was taught by her. I wrote a book with her, which I absolutely loved. But so the earth luck is the feng shui. So your energy of what your environment is bringing into you is a real thing. So if you have a lot of um, darker colors or like maybe pictures that make you feel depressed, you're sending a message out to the universe and your subconscious. I want more depression. That's what I want is more depression. Yeah. So you have to be aware of what your surroundings are. And believe it or not, too, um, everyone's born with a certain energy number, one through nine. I'm a seven, which is known as the advisor. I love, um, I love it. And um, in, in this uh, energy number, everyone has four best directions. Um, you have a success direction, wisdom direction, and you have a relationship direction and a health direction. And with those directions, you activate them and they bring in better energy for those areas. So wow. when I first started feng shui, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing in the world. Really? <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, I really don't want to look into this. And Anna's like, how about you just try it? And if you don't like it, you can stop. And I'm like, whatever. So <laughs> what happened was I moved a mirror because I looked at, I looked at, I looked at feng shui and the first thing that was brought up was mirrors. And I moved a mirror and because it was in the wrong position and I slept like a baby. And I was like, no, that can't be right. Um, so then I was talking to my friend and she's like, well, have you ever heard of Marie Diamond? I said, no. So I look at Marie Diamond and she talked about power position. So I actually put my desk in power position. And when I put my desk in power position, uh, 12 people booked in with me in five minutes no right way. after I moved it. Yeah. And I was like, I almost, like, I almost peed myself at that point. I was like, what? <laughs> so then I found out about the energy numbers and our direction. So then I said, you know what? I'm going to test this one more time. Yeah. So I activated my success direction in my office space because there's three rooms you should mainly look at your office, living room and bedroom. <laughs> Each represents something different. So your office is obviously your career. Right. So I activated my success direction, in my office space. After I activated my success direction, in my office space, I was actually um, offered six big events in one month, which led oh. me to my first personal mm -hmm. onstage live show. Oh, wow. And then I wrote a book with Marie Diamond, which went number one bestseller in one hour in eight different countries. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So then I got hooked and I studied it and I became a consultant. I mean, for crying out loud, I traveled to LA and I had, I had a cake with Marie Diamond in her house. And I was like, I can't believe this, you know? Um, so yeah, the feng shui is what you should work on first is your, your literal environment who you bring around you, what you bring around you, right. um, and all of that stuff. You want more money, put a little bit more gold in your foyer. You want, you know, there's certain things you can do. Yeah. So then the second, then the second one is your human luck. Now, going back real quick to earth luck, when you work on earth luck, it actually ripples into the other two. So you do really don't have to do much with the other two, but it does ripple in, but you still have to work in certain areas. So your human yeah. luck is your reaction to things. Um, what I love is that Bob Proctor teaches about the human luck a lot. He doesn't talk about human luck. He doesn't say right. human luck, but he talks about your reaction to things and the mindset. Yeah. So that is literally what your human luck is, is your mindset and how you're reacting to everything. Yeah. Um, which is absolutely fascinating. And then your heaven luck is your guidance. So what you do is where you listen to that intuition, you're guided in a certain way. So you're tapping into that heaven luck because you're being guided. So you're tapping into that 33.3 already. Right. And um, that's what the heaven luck is, is connecting with it. They say heaven luck is actually your your destiny and your chart on the other side. That's what your yeah. heaven luck is. But the way to use it or the way to do it is to tap into your guides, spirit, all of that stuff and be guided through that chart. And yeah. that is the other 33.3. So all together, I work with people with all three of those lucks. So I can work with their heaven luck with their with my psychic medium readings right. i work with their human luck with my transformational coaching and energy therapy yeah. and then of course the uh, earth luck with the feng shui wow so explain to me the the feng shui that was that when you started to reposition things and different yeah. things started to happen so how does that make an impact? Is it the energy, the points of certain things that are being redirected? It's 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 putting out different types of energies. Is that what it, it exactly is about? So your house is a 3D vision board. Okay. And so whatever you put in your house, you're 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 sending out to the universe. So if you have a lot of clutter around you, you're sending out a message to the universe going, I'm cluttered, I want a cluttered life, I want chaos. Yes. <laughs> you know, things like that. Now 
chi energy starts at your front door. So that's the good energy. Yeah. And when it comes in, it flows through your house. And what you want to do with feng shui is there certain directions where you want to place certain things because it's like an acupuncture to help that chi energy flow through your house properly. Yeah. So for example, my um, success direction is the Northwest. The Northwest is heaven's gates, which I find funny being a psychic medium, having the heaven's gates as my, you know, success direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. So in, in, in the Northwest, you can have, um, you can have silvers. Um, you can have a picture of you and your father. You can picture, you have a picture of you being a father um, because it's also known as a father direction. You yeah. can have um, angels. You can have um, whites and uh, grays, obviously. Um, so in that direction, you can have those areas. So that is the acupuncture that helps that chi energy go here we go, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I can't put any red in that direction because red represents fire and you can't have fire at heaven's gates. So the fire has to go in another area of the home or the other, or the, a different side. Do you understand what I mean? I'm, I'm getting um, there. I'm getting, it's, a, it's a lot of information. Yeah. It's, when I first studied it, it was so much. My mom's like, don't tell me how to do it. Just talk, just, you know, you just do it. <laughs> That's what my yeah. mom said. <laughs> um, but so you don't want to like mess up the direction. So for example, your north is water. <clears throat> um, so as you're in the north area, that's water. You don't want to put any fire in there because it can actually create um, steam in right. your career or things like that. Right. So it actually represents things. So for example, too, wow. let's talk about mirrors real quick. Yeah. You should never have a mirror um, in your bedroom directly across from your bed. So you should oh, never really? see the bed. Yeah. So the reason for this is because... Um, when you're sleeping at night, yeah. that mirror reflects your tiredness and makes you more tired. Oh, really? When, when, yeah, when you're sick in bed, it's reflecting the sickness. It's not making you heal fast enough. Um, and then on top of that, when you're laying there next to your husband or romantic partner, mm -hmm. it's actually double. So um, we were talking about, okay. So uh, with the mirrors, um, you can't have a mirror directly across from your, from your bed because as you're sleeping in bed, it will reflect your tiredness. And as you're um, sick in bed, it reflects your sickness so you don't heal fast enough. And then when you're laying there and you're laying there next to your partner um, and, you know, for marriage or your boyfriend, whatever, um, it actually doubles the amount of people. And that's what causes some affairs and cheating with people um, because it's doubling the amount of people coming into your relationship. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like I should be taking notes because this is so interesting. It's so much information to take in. Wow. It's beautiful though. It, 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 it's life changing. Like I said, I didn't believe in it. And then I started doing a whole bunch of stuff with like each of my directions. And I was actually having some health issues at um, some point. And I'm like looking at my bedroom because your bedroom represents your romantic relationship and your health. So I'm looking at my bedroom going, what is it that's causing me health problems? And in my health direction is where my master bathroom is. And your bathroom has actually bad feng shui. So I had to, I actually had to learn that I had to keep the bathroom door shut to keep my health up. Wow. So you yeah. should keep your bathroom door shut. And the, and and for your romantic relationship, it's it's not good to have a mirror across from your bed. And you, well, you shouldn't have a mirror across your bed at all because it would cause yourself more health issues um, if you're sick or if you're tired. But yeah, for your romantic relationships, it can double the amount of people causing affairs and cheating. And it could also affect your health. And it affects your health, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. my dresser has a mirror on it. I think I might detach it tonight. <laughs> you Well, if you, if, you, if you want to test it out first to see how you sleep and stuff, just cover the mirror with like a sheet or something okay. just to test it for you. Um, but yeah, so you don't want to have a mirror and, um, there's like other things too, where, <clears throat> for example, your foyer or your front door, whenever you walk in, um, that is where your money comes. So the chi energy comes there first and that's where your money comes. So if you have a lot of shoes that are sitting there, you're actually cluttering your money where you won't make money, make enough money. You move really? those shoes, you move those shoes and clean it up a little bit. You will start seeing money coming in. I'm going to um, move those shoes. I have a shoe basket right next to my door that takes, yeah. everyone puts their shoes in. <laughs> yeah. You, they say that you should like put it in a closet. So if you have a closet right near there, put it in yeah. the closet. But the shoes are bad. Like it's bad feng shui to have shoes out. Um, put those away. You shouldn't have, uh, 
um, well, for example, with your family, your living room represents your family. And if you ever like, if you're sitting there and you're going, wow, my kids are 40 years old and haven't moved out yet. If you sit there and you look at your living room and you're like, well, I love my pictures. And it's like your kid, if it's your, your children, but they're still as children, yeah, yeah. they're not going to move out because it's sending the universe out a message saying, I want my kids to always be kids. Oh, um, okay. so if you move those pictures and, you know, you just tuck them away and you put a picture yeah. of them as they're aged now, right. you'll see them walk up to you going, Oh, I'm going to move out now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah, what it's would... all based on your, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Yeah. It's all based on energy. So it's all based on like the, like it's a 3d vision board. It's literally everything down to it is causing whatever your life is about. Oh, that's so interesting. And what did you say about money? You said you you five you booked five things. It could you changed your desk and you changed the area. That so would... I put my desk in power position. And... Um, power position is where you can see the main door of the room when you're sitting at your desk. Okay. Because people all the time have your desk up against the wall or window, and what happens with that is your opportunities don't come through walls or windows. Right. They come through the door. So yeah. you have to face the door and you have to be able to see it. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. So yeah. when you teach these classes, you teach, you, you're, you're teaching them step-by-step step how to learn all three and how to, how to, how to incorporate it into their daily lives as well. Well, um, so I do, I do teach portions of it. Um, there is actually going to be a program that I'm actually creating where people can work on all three with me. Oh, very um, cool which is going to be amazing. But um, typically what it is, is if they're like, well, I feel like I need to work on my heaven luck, then they can say book in with a psychic reading. So they can book okay. in with a psychic reading. Or if they need help with their human luck, they would come in for the transformational coaching. And then the feng shui is where people can come. So it all based on what they feel needed to draw into. Right. Um, and as they get connected, they get guided and helped. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very cool. I like this. And you have all these different programs on your what on your website. I assume I saw your website. And I saw that you had a you had a tab for like programs and things like that. So you have all everything that you offer. Name some of yeah. you offer so they people know. So I do the psychic medium readings. Um, I do psychic parties, uh, small groups, parties. Um, I do the uh, transformational coaching. Um, I do the energy therapy, which is like Reiki and IET, which is integrated energy therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of combine those. So it depends on what you need from me. I look at you gotcha. going, well, I feel like you need more of a deeper cleanse or this. Um, so I do that. And then I do the feng shui. So I can feng shui your home. I can feng shui your business. I can actually feng shui for real estate, which means if you want to sell a house, I can feng shui that house and set it up to make it so it sells for you. Or if you want to find a home that's perfect feng shui for you, which feng shui is never perfect, but best feng shui for you, yeah. um, then I can actually go with you and I can see what the house looks like, the room's directions and say, this house would be perfect for you to move into, or mm, this house would give you this problem or that problem. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. So what, when you do a cleansing, is that basically taking out all the negative energy out of that person? Like just kind of like cleansing them and just leaving positive energy and, and kind of doing it in that sense. So for the energy therapy, um, I'm working with um, angels and um, angelic energy. And what I do is I go through and I clean out the aura. I clean out the chakras, um, organs and things like that, that I see some gunk around and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then I'm replacing it with that angelic energy. So it's pretty much helping you have a reset of your energy and okay. allowing you to feel more relaxed and I can breathe now, you know, things like yeah. that. And when you were doing this, how did you know this was your purpose in life? Like, you know, we go through different things in life and we realize as we, when we do things like, wow, this is my purpose. This is my true purpose in life. Like, how did you know when that time was right, when you knew it was your true, true purpose? So when I started doing the readings full time, um, after working at the fa that factory, um, that's when it clicked in because I felt like I was doing what I love to do and that's helping people and that's truly what people should do is when people tell me Christopher I don't feel like my career is going anywhere blah 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 
it's because you don't love your career. You should always yeah. love your career. You should always Absolutely. love what you're doing. Right. Um, so that's why I do what I do because um, when I work with people, I'll get numerous messages um, from people afterwards that say things like, thank you so much for helping me. You know, um, you completely changed my life. And obviously I always tell people, don't ever thank me, thank spirit. Cause I'm just the messenger. I yeah. don't like to have the thank you spirits all, the, you know, all up here. Yeah. But, um, when it comes down to it, uh, it's that life changing, um, that life changing, oh my aha moment that I see in people's yeah. eyes that make me feel good. That right. makes me it makes me happy. And w when um, I've had, you know, people that come in for readings and uh, they message me afterwards going, Chris, I was literally thinking about committing suicide or I was so upset about my life and you completely turned that around for me. And I thank you so much for that. Like that, that touches me too, because I'm yeah. helping people understand it's okay to be here. We yeah. may not like it. Trust me, 38 times, I don't like it. Um, but at the same time, we have to continue yeah. and learn. I would get like dreams, like dreams that I'm, I am coming back again. And I'd actually wake up in the morning all stressed out. And it's like, I would be like in, in my dream, I would be fighting it. Like, no, I don't want to come back. No, I don't want to do this again. And then I would wake up and I would feel stressed. And I, but it was just, it was wh whatever was happening. It was like, it was like, uh, like, like they want, I like it I, either. It was a past regression, you know, something that happened. And then I came back and I, I didn't really want to, or it was, you know, but I felt like I felt like it was like uh, like it was a part of my life in my past, like, you know, it was something, you know, it just seemed so, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you're an older soul anyways, honey. So you've been here numerous times and all of that stuff, too. Um, and what happens is t it's typical for older souls to um, have dreams of past lives. And it's it's very like, you know how they say with kids like night terrors like some children have very bad night terrors yeah and people are always like well what's wrong with them they're dreaming of their past life they're dreaming yeah. of how they died you know things like that so we typically um we typically connect that way and what's funny too is um uh well well i'm talking to you i'm connecting a little bit like i always do but um you actually astral project a lot as well so your soul leaves your body while you're sleeping because you just don't want to be here. It's one of those things of I'm a free soul. I'm a free spirit. Yeah. So you travel a lot as you sleep, honey. I actually, I, I remember, I can remember a handful of times where I've, 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 I was sleeping, but I was flying and it was, it was not a normal feeling. It was like, I can't even explain. It was like a free bird. It was like, I was flying through the air. But I was not, I was like just going over stuff and I was going through, like passing over countries in, in seconds. Like it was just, but it was such a, such a pleasurable, refreshing feeling. And I didn't want to come back. I was just like enjoying it. It was like, you know how they say sometimes when you cross over, it's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. People who have, God forbid, you know, they, their heart stops and they almost died and they got resuscitated and they, they talk about this experience. Well, I felt like I, I was flying free like a bird and I was just like in, in just a, just such a serenity, such a peaceful feeling, such a, such a, a happiness that I can't even explain with in a normal terminology that we used on earth. It was just an amazing feeling, but I've only remembered a couple of them, like, you know, and, you know, that I can remember, you know, personally. So this is something yeah. that I go through all the time. Yeah. So what wow. happens is, and that, that's actually a typical astral projection, which I find so funny because that's actually a typical astral projection, astral projection. but with you too, um, and anyone that does astral project overall, a lot of times we'll go to the other side and visit loved ones over there. And then we'll come back. And those are those times where you sit, where you sit up in bed and you're like, I know I dreamt something. I just can't remember what it was. Yeah. And the, it's very normal for that to happen because we're not allowed to remember anything that happens over there. Right. So we can go visit. Yeah. When we come back, we're not allowed to know. Oh, really? Because there's times mm -hmm. that like I've had conversations, like I've, I've, I have was sleeping and I felt like I was having a conversation with someone that passed over and they're talking away and they're talking away and they're talking away. And, and then I would wake up and then maybe I'll remember a couple words, but I won't remember the conversation, but maybe like two or three words or maybe a sentence or two I remembered, 
but I couldn't tell you the whole conversation. And there are times where I felt like I've seen people, you know, like in, in clusters of people and it was pretty amazing. And then, you know, I came back and it's like, you know, I thought it meant something and sometimes it didn't mean what I thought it meant, but, you know, I remember seeing it, you know, and I was just trying, I guess, trying to self-analyze what I thought I saw, but I have had times where people, they seem like they're talking, right? I could hear their voice crystal clear in my ear and, and then I'm just, you know. Yeah. And well, the thing though is, is that with that too, it's, our loved ones are always around us. I love to tell people that they're always around. Yeah. Us. So sometimes they always like to pop in and visit. It may not be a sign. They're just saying, Hey, I'm here. How are you? Yeah. You know, so I, whenever I see now, I don't see my loved ones as much as I see everybody else's, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Um, but, uh, whenever I do see a loved one, I get so excited and I'm, you know, I feel full. My, um, my grandfather, his, he was a, his last name was Quackenbush. So my grandpa Quackenbush, uh, he was actually my great grandpa. Um, he passed away. When he first passed away, I would see him all the time. Yeah. And then I stopped seeing him. And I said to Anna, I said, why don't I see my grandfather? Can you get him for me? Yeah. And she goes, oh, he's busy. That's all she said. Oh, he's busy. <laughs> and I said, he's dead. What is he doing? You know, like, <laughs> what, are, what are they doing over there? Yeah, right. And um, probably a month later, he shows up. And he goes, I go, where have you been? He said, oh, I'm training to be a spirit guide. I said, oh, good for you. You leave me in this hellhole and you're over there having a grand old time. <laughs> and then probably a few months later after that, he shows up and I said, well, how's training going? He goes, oh, I have a charge. And I always joke with people. I swear to you, I'm going to find whoever took my grandfather as a spirit guide and took him away from me because he still visits me once in a while. But I'm going to find him. I'm going to kick his butt. <laughs> whoever it was, I'm going to kick his butt. I always, you know, I always wonder that, like, if they're a spirit guide and they're watching over us, but then they're 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 traveling and they have regress for lies. Like, like, how do they how do they split themselves up? Let's say they were here before and they have a family that they previously have. Then they came and they created their family with you, and then you know, and then they pass over. It's let's say they they've been here many times. It's like it's like you know, do they just go when they hear themselves calling? Do they remember everybody? They remember all their lives once they go up there, you know? Yeah. So when you cross over, you still you get to remember everything, past lives, this life, everything. Um, so you do get to remember everything, and then you get to see your loved ones still. Like you can still like he'll still pop in once in a while. Yeah. But with spirit guides, they do a thing called by locate, so they can yeah. actually be in two places at once. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Wow. So like when I'm doing readings, Anna will be in the hall of um, the hall of records going through the person's chart, telling me what's in the person's chart. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I think I think that's the biggest thing I hear from people is that when someone they love pass over, they just want to know, you know, they want to hear that person. They want to know what that person was thinking or how they feel or they just want to. I think it, it puts people at ease. It, it gives people a, a sense of serenity, just, you know, just to know one, that they're in a better place two that they're still around that reassurance. I think, I think people as earthlings, we still want that reassurance that they're close by because we love them so much, you know, even though they're in a better place and they're not suffering and they're probably having a grand old time wherever they are. We as humans, I think just want to hold on. We're like selfish beings in a sense, I guess, because of our emotions. Yeah, well, I, I love you brought up the word selfish because that's literally what grief is, you know, and I and I'm not saying that in a bad way because I do grief still, too. But people grieve because we're selfish because we want them here. We're yeah. selfish enough to want them back. Yeah, so that's what grief is. It is selfish. You know, yeah. we, we don't I don't I don't care that they were sick. They were fine here, you know. Right. But right. in reality, they want we want them over there. We want them healthy. Yeah. You know. So it works like that. I, I I find it very interesting too when people like I and I used to be one of those people. Um, when we hold on to material things, yeah, you know, I'm I'm fine with like I still have my grandpa Quackenbush's jacket that hangs in my living room closet. <laughs> like I still have that, but um, I used to have a lot of his stuff because I was grieving so badly um from his death. Yeah, and one day I just woke up going nope and I threw it all out I just couldn't I didn't need it anymore but right. the spirit doesn't want us to keep it anyways because everything here is temporary everything yeah. here is temporary and you know and they always say like let's say you have a loved one that enjoyed their ring so much it was one yeah. of their favorite rings they can look at their finger and it shows up 
Right. And, you know, they have copies of it on their side. So they don't need what we have here. So we don't no. either. Right. Wow. That's pretty deep. You know, it's, it's, uh, it makes us, you know, too bad. We, we, you know, if, if everybody could connect to the, to, to the other world, the other side, you know, our spirit world, and they could take that knowledge and they could apply it to their earthling life, how different people will be and the way they perceive the way they act, you know, if they could just take what the other side tries to promote, you know, or, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing, you know, um, but you also, I, I, you tell me about the book because you have a best-selling book and I want to know more about it. Like, tell me about it. I'm so proud. I'm so excited for you. So with my, with the book, Global Conscious Entrepreneurs, um, it is, I'm, and I'm actually working on my own personal book right now, but I, it was with Marie Diamond. I had the opportunity and what this book is, is um, 49 different authors are in there. Wow. And each one of us have a chapter in the book in our picture and in our information and contact and everything. And um, what it is, it's about, about our stories and how we became who we are and yeah. why we want to continue to transform this world. Right. Um, so it's very beautiful, empowering. There's so many different stories in there. Like um, as me as a psychic medium, there's some feng shui practitioners. Um, there's, energy people and other people that have different gifts and you know stuff like that right um so i find it so interesting on how the world came together for this book and marie actually wrote three of them um she the first one i did with her which became number one bestseller in eight countries um uh with obviously the other um you know 46 people well, yeah 47 people um, but then she made two other ones that are different colored to continue to the global, um, global knowledge on who's out there to help people. Yeah. That's why she did what she did. So it's very interesting. Um, I was very blessed. And like I said, I'm working on one now. I actually have another book out that's on Amazon, but it's a workbook that, um, I'm just, it's just one of those things of like, I wanted to make it for people. Yeah. Here it is. And um, it's actually about the three locks. It's called Taking It Back. And it's about, it's a simple guide to take back your life. Oh, um, right. And each section is about um, the three locks and a small story about that luck. And then there's three, um, three things in each luck that you can do to start transforming that. Oh, wow. I like that. <laughs> and what is yeah. it called? What is, what's, what's the title of it? Uh, taking it back um, uh, a simple guide to start transforming your life by Christopher Stilson it's on Amazon um, it was just one of those simple little workbooks and yeah. it has obviously it has a uh, blank paper where you write in it obviously and things like right. that. right oh excellent yeah. I love it and this book that you're working on is it probably going to be released next year or when are you planning to have it ready I'm hoping this year Oh, good. Um, we are we are in the year of the wooden dragon, which I'm super excited for through the Chinese New Year, um, which is interesting because tomorrow is the Lunar New Year. So I'm happy I'm doing oh. this podcast with you today. <laughs> um, but as the wooden dragon, because each year a new animal will come in, and this year will be the year of the wooden dragon, which hasn't happened in 60 years. Oh wow! Um, so this is the year of the wooden dragon. And I'm a rooster in Chinese zodiac. So whatever you are, animal, whatever animal you are, and whatever animal comes in will help, will be a prediction of your life. Oh. And actually, this year is supposed to bring me fame and success. So I want to use that energy and get that book out there. Oh, I love it! This is exciting. Oh my goodness! Oh, I love it! I love it! So we're gonna keep an eye on that. that. Because, uh, you know, I definitely want I want to see a copy when, it, when it's published. And I'm sure a yeah. lot of people listening to this is going to want to see a copy as well. Now, where can people find you on the website? Uh, www.christopherstilson.com um, is my website. It has all the other information on there right now. We are tweaking it up now. I have a person working on the website to launch the new website soon. Mm -hmm. So if you go on there now, possibly you may see the old one. Um, the new one will be about the Lux and things like that. Very cool. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then of course, it's going to have my, my Facebook on there and things like that too. Now, like to take away before we go, like if you had to take away and emphasize a couple of important, um, things from everything we talked about, what would you like to emphasize to the, to, and to the, re to the listeners and how, you know, make them, you know, kind of focus on some of the important factors that we've talked about. 
Um, one thing would probably be the fact that I always tell people, be in tuned, allow yourself to relax enough to be guided by spirit, because that is the most important thing here, to allow yourself to be in the way of this direction for myself, this direction for myself, because if you're not, then everything just seems chaotic and we feel depressed, anxiety and stress. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, make sure you work on your lux, change your luck, change your life. That's what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. And before we go, tell everybody one more time, tell them your website. I want to make sure they hear it. www.christopherstilson.com. Oh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been, uh, I've just enjoyed it and you are just an amazing person. And I hope that you'll be on the show soon and we could have, you know, talk about more topics and talk about different energies and, and the spiritual world and how people can incorporate that in their lives. Cause I think a lot of people want to incorporate it in their lives. And I think some people are a little cynical but they have to, you know, if we can open their mind and, and broaden their, you know, their, I call it the little gray box, you know, and uh, because I think there are a lot of people that do want to connect to the spiritual world and they do want to connect to loved ones, but then, you know, they say they're in that gray box, you know, and, yeah. you know, sometimes just by listening to people and just, you know, and, and hearing others talk, maybe we can get them out of that gray box a little bit and, and get them to, to kind of endure different things and maybe change their lives. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. <laughs> well, Christopher, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I have enjoyed this and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. You have a great day. You too. Bye.